Republic Act Number no. 10607, Section 1, Presidential Decree Number no. 6112 as amended, is hereby amended to read as follows. General Provisions, Section 1. This decree shall be known as the Insurance Code. Section 2. Whenever used in this code, the following terms shall have the respective meanings herein after set forth or indicated unless the context otherwise requires. A. A contract of insurance is an agreement whereby one undertakes for consideration to indemnify another against a loss, damage, or liability arising from an unknown or contingent event. A contract of surety ship shall be deemed to be an insurance contract within the meaning of this code only if made by a surety who or which as such is doing an insurance business as here and after provided. B. The term doing an insurance business or transacting an insurance business within the meaning of this code shall include 1. Making or proposing to make as insurer any insurance contract. 2. Making or proposing to make as surety any contract of surety ship as a vocation and as, as merely incidental to any other legitimate business or activity of the surety. 3. Doing any kind of business including an insurance business specifically recognized as constituting the doing of an insurance business within the meaning of this code. 4. Doing or proposing to do any business in substance equivalent to any of the foregoing in a manner designed to evade the provisions of this code. In the application of the provisions of this code, the fact that no profit is derived from the making of insurance contracts, agreements, or transactions, or that no separate or direct consideration is received, therefore, shall not be deemed conclusive to show that the making thereof does not constitute the doing or transacting of an insurance business. As used in this code, the term commissioner means the insurance commissioner. Chapter 1. The Contract of Insurance. Title 1. What may be insured. Section 3. Any contingent or unknown event, whether past or future, which may damnify a person having an insurable interest or create a liability against him, may be insured against, against subject to the provisions of this chapter. The consent of the spouse is not necessary for the validity of an insurance policy taken out by a married person on his or her life or that of his or her children. All rights, title, and interest in the policy of insurance taken out by an original owner on the life or health of the persons insured shall automatically vest in the latter upon the death of the original owner unless otherwise provided for in the policy. Section 4. The preceding section does not authorize an insurance for or against the drawing of any lottery or for or against any chance or ticket in a lottery drawing a prize. Section 5. All kinds of insurance are subject to the provisions of this chapter so far as the provisions can apply. Title 2. Parties to the Contract Section 6. Every corporation, partnership, or association duly authorized to transact insurance business as elsewhere provided in this code may be an insurer. Section 7. Anyone except a public enemy may be insured. Section 8. Unless the policy otherwise provides where a mortgagor of property effects insurance in his own name, providing that the loss shall be payable to the mortgagee or assigns a policy of insurance to a mortgagee, the insurance is deemed to be upon the interest of the mortgagor, who does not cease to be a party to the original contract and any act of his prior to the loss, which would otherwise avoid the insurance, will have the same effect, although the property in the is in the hands of the mortgagee, but any act which under the contract of insurance is to be performed by the, mor by the mortgagor may be performed by the mortgagee therein named with the same effect af as if it had been performed by the mortgagor. Section 9. If an insurer assents to the transfer of an insurance from a mortgagor to a mortgagee and at the time of his assent imposes further obligations on the assignee making a new contract with him, the acts of the mortgagor cannot affect the rights of said assignee. Title 3. Insurable Interest Section 10. Every person has an insurable interest in the life and health of letter A himself of him of his spouse and of his children b of any person on whom he depends wholly or in part for education or support or in whom he has a pecuniary interest 
c of any person under a legal obligation to him for the payment of money or respecting property or services of which death or illness might delay or prevent the performance and letter d any person upon whose life any estate or interest vested in him depends section 11 the insured shall have the right to change the beneficiary he designated in the policy unless he has expressly waived this right in said policy notwithstanding notwithstanding the foregoing in the event the insured does not change the beneficiary during his lifetime the designation shall be deemed irrevocable Section 12. The interest of a beneficiary in a life insurance policy shall be forfeited when the beneficiary is the principal, accomplice, or accessory in willfully bringing about the death of the insured. In such a case, the share forfeited shall pass on to the other beneficiaries unless otherwise disqualified. In the absence of other beneficiaries, the proceeds the proceeds shall be paid in accordance with the policy contract. If the policy contract is silent, the proceeds shall be paid to the estate of the insured. Section 13. Every interest in property, whether real or personal or any relation thereto, or liability in respect thereof of such nature that a contemplated peril might directly damnify the insured, is an insurable interest. Section 14. An insurable interest in property may consist in a. An existing interest b. An inchoate interest founded on an existing interest or c. An expectancy coupled with an existing interest in that out of which the expectancy arises. Section 15. A carrier or depository of any kind has an insurable interest in a thing held by him as such to the extent of his liability but not to exceed the value thereof. Section 16. A mere contingent or expectant interest in anything not founded on an actual right to the thing nor upon any valid contract for it is not insurable. Section 17. The measure of an insurable interest in property is the extent to which the insured might be damnified by loss or injury thereof. Section 18. No contract or policy of insurance on property shall be enforceable except for the benefit of some person having an insurable interest in the property insured. Section 19. An interest in property insured must exist when the insurance takes effect and when the loss occurs but need not exist in the meantime. An interest in the life or health of a person insured must exist when the insurance takes effect, but need not exist thereafter or when the loss occurs. Section 20, except in the cases specified in the next four sections and in the cases of life, accident, and health insurance, a change of interest in any part of a thing insured unaccompanied by a corresponding change of interest in the insurance suspends the insurance to an equivalent extent until the interest in the thing and the interest in the insurance are vested in the same person. Section 21. A change of interest in a thing insured after the occurrence of an injury which results in a loss does not affect the right of the insured to indemnity for the, lo for, for the loss. Section 22. A change of interest in one or more of several distinct things separately insured by one policy does not avoid the insurance as to the others. Section 23. A change of interest by will or succession on the death of the insured does not avoid an insurance and his interest in the insurance passes to the person taking his interest in the thing insured. Section 24. A transfer of interest by one of several partners, joint owners or owners in common who are jointly insured to the others does not avoid an insurance even though it has been agreed that the insurance shall cease upon an alienation of the thing insured. Section 25. Every stipulation in the policy of insurance for the payment of loss, whether the person insured has or has not any interest in the property insured or that the policy shall be received as proof of such interest and every policy executed by way of gaming or wagering is void.